In the early 2010s, there was no way around Tiger. He and his music embodied the swagger lifestyle, which at the time was his highlight. Songs like Raxity and Switch Lanes dominated clubs worldwide. And his collaboration project Fan of a Fan with Chris Brown is seen by many as a classic. It was thought that Tiger, which at the time had the backbone of one of the hottest rap labels, i.e. Young Money, was the next big thing. But it was quite different. No one talked about Tiger's music anymore, and the scandals increased. The hip-hop community agreed between 2015 and 2018. Tiger was a failure. But Tiger made one of the most blatant comebacks in the hip-hop scene of all time, if not even the most blatant comeback. How Tiger was able to fall so low and how he managed to get out of this shit again, I'll explain to you today in this video. I'm Rizzi Machiavelli, I do hip-hop documentaries. If you like my videos, you can leave a subscription and a comment so you can support me incredibly. Let's start with the video. Tiger, aka Michael Ray Stevenson, was born on November 19, 1989 in Compton, California. His father had Jamaican roots and his mother Vietnamese, but he grew up with his mother. His father had some problems with the law and, according to Tiger's statements, not really often for his son. Tiger's mother noticed very early on that the area of Compton was not a good area for a growing boy because there are a lot of attempts and dangers here. So Tiger moved with his family when he was about 10, 11 years old to a slightly better area, a suburb of Los Angeles. He also started recording music very early on. His then role models were Eminem, Lil Wayne and Fabulous. In 2007, his first mixtape, Young on Probation, was released. And that, of course, didn't get a lot of attention yet. Because Tiger was not yet signed at the time. He even sold his records on the street. He distributed them. That's quite common in the States. But still, in the same year, in 2007, Tiger met Trevi McCoy in a flight club in Los Angeles. And this event probably completely changed Tiger's life. Because at that time, Trevi McCoy was already an established artist who had very good contacts in the music scene. You may know him. A few years later, he had a huge hit with Bruno Mars, which is called Billionaire. Tiger just seized his chance. He had a little small talk with Trevi and gave him his tape. Nevertheless, Tiger was not aware at the time that Trevi was already so established because only a short time later, Tiger watched MTV and suddenly saw Trevi McCoy. When he saw that, he destroyed Trevi with DMs. He wrote him every day that he should finally listen to Tiger's mixtape. And that's what Trevi McCoy finally did. For this reason, Tiger signed his very first contract with Trevi. Through these contacts, Tiger was able to perform on stage in front of a million audiences. That must have been an incredible feeling for him. And Tiger also managed to connect. Because after this performance, he was able to keep in touch with Lil Wayne. And it didn't take long before Tiger signed his first contract with Young Money. He released his debut album called No Introduction back in 2008 with Trevi McCoy and the single Coconut Juice went viral for the conditions at the time. And so it was no wonder that Lil Wayne and Birdman beat each other and Tiger crawled. Tiger was surrounded by very talented artists in Young Money's team, among other things by Nicki Minaj and Drake. At that time, Tiger always claimed that his artist name, Tiger, is an acronym for Thank You God Always. He also always said that he comes from the streets of Compton and had a tough youth. Yes, these statements are only a few years later, not really aged well. But we'll get to that in a moment. But the fact is, if you do it on the street, you'll be tested someday. And that was the case with Tiger. Because his Young Money chain, which he got when he signed with Young Money, was simply taken from him. And that from two unknown men who came armed. Yes, this chain ended up with the rapper 40 Glock, who uploaded a video with this chain. It's your boy Village Boo. No lot of you motherfuckers are gonna run around talking about, Oh, 40, you jacked a little kid. Uh. Nigga, we ain't jacked a little nigga. But nigga, we got it though. Get that. We got the money. Look at that. We got the money, man. Yeah, we got the money, man. Right price, you can get that back. We got money. We listening. You know, the street fuck with us because we fuck with the street. You feel me? Man. That's how we got our hands on these because we fuck with the street. Now, you man. want them back, we can negotiate. You feel me? That's what happens when you're from the slums and you see cupcakes. Man. I got young money on my back, y'all. And here, Tiger's gangster image has already started to crumble. But that was nothing really bad because his music has gone through the roof. For example, he befriended Chris Brown. And with this, he then released the mixtape A Fan of a Fan. And wow, there were blatant bangers on it. In my eyes, these are now classics. For example, the song Hola at Me. Or Deuces. 
Used to be dialing times together all the time. The tape came out in 2010, and who experienced this time back then knows how blatant this combination was back then. Simply everyone wanted to be like Tyga and Chris Brown. Snapbacks, colorful pants, and last king's clothes. Everyone ran around like that. Tyga's final breakthrough in the mainstream. But he succeeded in 2012 with his single Rack, rack City. City bitch, rack, rack City bitch. This single was on the first album released by Tyga via Young Money, and that was Rise of the Last King. Here, among other things, the song Faded was on it. And make it nasty. Make it nasty, make it nasty. These were club hymns that really took everything apart. Especially, I'll say it again, Rack City. He made such waves, I can still remember it. Back then we were allowed to make music in music class at school. A few people turned on Rack City, and the people were like, suddenly my classmates also started listening to rap music. And that from America. That was really something. Thanks to this success, Tiger managed to chart on fourth place with this album, and that is really remarkable. In the music video for Rack City, you could see Tiger's flame, Black China, with which he also had a child. Yes, that was Tiger's peak. But of course, negative things also come with success. And so TMZ fucked Tiger pretty hard because they leaked a video, which actually should never have come out. That was a compilation of an MTV show that was never released. This was called Bust Hex and was hosted by the rapper Corrupt. And in this series, it was about rappers fighting each other. And that's how the most blatant rapper is judged. Only the challenges were a bit strange. So the rappers had to use a photo from a grill to recognize who owns this grill. They also had to dance. That was also a bit cringe. No, tiger! We need some females up here. You need some females? Yeah. Well, you know what? You gotta be a baller to get the females. Let's see his moves. Auf jeden Fall hat Tiger da mitgemacht und Tiger hat hier gesagt, dass er keine schwierige Jugend hatte und dass seine Eltern sogar ein gutes Auto gefahren sind. Außerdem sagt er hier, dass er seinen Namen Tiger von seiner Mutter hat. Seine Mutter hat ihn als Kind immer Tiger Woods genannt, weil er Tiger Woods einfach ähnlich gesehen hat. Tiger, a.k.a. one of the greatest. Tiger, I got this name when I was young. My mom used to say I looked like Tiger Woods, so I just stuck with that. Grew up, not too tough. Parents got a Range Rover, CL600, doing it big. Not too much hard, but I'm still street. Yeah, the show was pretty corny. I'll show you a few things. Among other things, Tiger was even booed here. It's like, look, people do whatever for the fame. Act a little different when they get it, but they money the same. For me, both. I ain't even tripping. Had on me, both. I got the six blow. What are you talking about? Tiger, of course, spoke to this leak. He said that the whole thing was scripted and that he just participated because he wanted to be successful and was ready to lie. The question is, of course, who you believe now. In the end, Tiger's gangster image was scratched by this leak. Well, that wasn't a reason why his career crashed, because his album slash mixtape run until 2015 is legendary in my eyes. In 2013, for example, the album Hotel California came out. Here, for example, the single Dope was on it. I'm a shit dope. Also Molly Fans all of my dollars. I'm everywhere it's popping And probably one of the strongest Tiger songs of all time, Switch Lanes Then that switch lanes, then them doors swing All my the window These were club bangers again, some of whom still run in the clubs to this day In 2014, Bitch I'm the Shit came out Here were hits like Bouncing on my deep Bad ass bitches, bouncing on my dick, bouncing on my dick Bitch better have my money Bitch better have my money and a song that I personally celebrated a lot, and in my eyes is still a bit underrated, and that is F With You. In February, fan of a fan. The album came out and brought this album that was a collab album with Chris Brown, and that took everything apart. I still remember how this album just ran everywhere. I mean, look at the singles that were on it. I Ob Bitches and Marijuana So all the other songs on this album were also blatant. In my eyes, it is one of the most blatant West Coast albums of all time. But the success seemed to crumble there. Tiga disputed his label Young Money. He accused Birdman and his label that he was never really paid for his hit singles. For this reason, he wanted to get out of his contract. But Birdman did not want to let him go. For this reason, Tiger's next album, The Gold Album, delayed for several months, and in the end, he had to buy himself for a million dollars. 
At least that's what the reports say. And Tyga released this album independently and that over his own label. And although Tyga had the support of Kanye West, this album did not chart well because it sold less than 2,000 units in the first week and did not even make the top 100. This means that this album performed worse than Tyga's first album. Critics did not really celebrate this album either. They rated it very poorly. And somehow Tyga suddenly disappeared from the picture, at least from the musical one. In the meantime, he broke up with Black China and had a new flame. And that was Kylie Jenner. So far, so good. The problem was that Kylie was underage at the time because when Tyga came out with her, she was supposed to be about 16 to 17 years old. Kylie Jenner was already a mega personality at the time, a public figure, everyone knew her. And that Tyga is together with this underage girl, it was clear that the media were falling for Tyga. At first, the two always denied the relationship, but Kylie's 17th birthday was celebrated in Tiger's villa, for example. And Tiger's response to all this criticism was also very strange because in August 2015, he released his next album. Fuck what they talking about. By the way, I really like this album, but there was one song on it that is a bit weird. This song is called Stimulated and came out with a music video. The song is about Kylie Jenner. In the music video, you can only see Kylie Jenner. And yes, give yourself what Tiger says in this song. I'm penetrating, I'm putting in, I'm penetrating, I'm Getting big. They say she young, I should have waited. She big girl dog when she stimulated. In the meantime, the song was taken down everywhere. I just wonder why. At some point, however, this topic was no longer talked about because Kylie Jenner was also 18 at some point. And that's when she became the superstar we know today. And because of that, Tyga just became her sidekick. Everyone only knew Tyga as a friend of Kylie Jenner and no longer as Tyga the rapper. For this reason, no one ever talked about his music, but only about the scandals that happen outside of the music. For this reason, the relationship with Kylie Jenner didn't do Tyga's career well at all. And, oh shit guys, Tyga also had a lot of scandals. For example, he had a beef with Drake that he lost mercilessly. I have already made an extra video about this beef on my second channel. You are welcome to check it out if you are interested. Then he sued an old business partner of his clothing brand, Last Kings, for $1.8 million. Producers have filed a lawsuit because he did not pay his beats. Among other things, the beat of Molly was also not paid. He had a lot of tax problems and his rent for his villa and all the entertainment costs and leasing costs for his luxury cars were also not paid for months. For this reason, debt increased from a six-digit range. In addition, another $200,000 was owed to a jeweler, which Tyga should not have paid either. Then there was such a scandal with a girl who turned out to be older, although she was only 14 years old. Here Tiga should have been slid into her DMs. Yes, you notice there were a lot of beats about Tyga, only musically he was not talked about. Even if many of these accusations were not true. Yes, still people, such beats simply damage a career. In 2017, he broke up with Kylie Jenner and at first everyone thought, okay, now Tyga has really lost everything. But I'll be honest with you, the breakup of Kylie Jenner did Tyga incredibly well. All this media attention that Kylie Jenner brought with her was suddenly gone and Tyga could just focus on his music. That's why he released three albums that was Bitch I'm the Shit 2, Bugatti Raw and Kyoto. They all couldn't really perform. But I'm of the opinion that these albums weren't bad albums. They just weren't classic Tyga albums in which he brought club banger. He had lost this club sound over the years, but he had found exactly this sound with a song that brought him back to the mainstream. And that was Taste Feet Offset. This was a classic Tiger song. Women in a music video. The song was rocking and he was running in the clubs. And so Tiger simply found his touch again. He knew where he came from and brought the people what they knew about him. Taste has over a billion streams today only on Spotify. And actually that was also the beginning of Tiger's blatant comeback. Because after this song it really went down. Tiger delivered hit single after hit single. Songs like Swish. The fucking money finger banger to the honey. If you back dip with Nicki Minaj. Girls have fun with G Easy and Rich the Kid. Bro, hey, I could go on like this for hours. There was Broke Leg. There was the song Cream with Iggy. Tiger really delivered hit singles constantly. And that's how he managed to get into his second prime. For this reason, I am of the opinion that Tyga has the most blatant comeback in hip hop history. But now I am interested, which Tyga did you find more blatant? The 2012 mixtape Tyga or the 2018 Tyga, which went viral all the time? I thank you for watching this video so far. See you next time.